Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like it o'clock. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. That's right. Whatever time it is, and when you feel like it, is when we do it. <laughs> and we're doing it right here. That's right. I had to wait for the sound. I had to wait for the noise from the Perlocopter to get toned down now. To get clear. Get to right. Clear, yeah. So it's here at the Seattle apartment. Uh, anyways. You guys know, do I even need to introduce these guys anymore? This is Steel Flyers, of course, from www.steelflyers.com. Finest sports uh, website in the land. Right, Steel? How are you doing, my big guy? Man, I'm doing great. Doing great. Thanks for having me on. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Right. We're going to be doing what uh, we see here in the background. You know, the series we've been doing, everybody knows about it. Everybody. Right? New Jersey Devils, we're going to be doing the series on... The off-season moves and what it projects for their future. And we have the pro Joe. I like to call him pro Joe. Professor Joe Bork here, <laughs> sir. I like pro Joe. I like, I like it. Yes. I like it. Pro, pro Joe. Joe. Pro Joe. How you doing, every guy? Doing well, doing well. Always excited to talk some hockey. And uh, let's get right to it um, as we're going to be talking about the uh, Devils and their aspirations for the future mostly, I believe. Yes, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, and it's big time. I think we're going to come to the realization that future is the big word here for the New Jersey Devils. So since that being the case, and we're talking about off-season moves, um, the New Jersey Devils have been on a bit of a journey of a rebuild. They've got some, they got they got Hughes, one, oh, first overall, or was he first overall, and he sure, uh, I think he was for also first overall in the draft. And uh, this was on uh, a pretty good thing to have happen to a rebuilding team. Uh, and now they're continuing in that vein. So let's go first to probably what was the biggest uh, part of New Jersey's offseason for them, the draft. Steele, what was this draft like? Who did, what, what did, who did they draft and how did you like it, buddy? Well, I'll tell you what, man. Um... It's, it was really kind of interesting what they did because they had three picks in the first round, okay? So they did some maneuvering around and were able to garner three uh, picks in the first round. And they got the number seventh overall pick, the number 18th overall pick, and the number 20th overall pick. And then, like what you had mentioned previously in the couple of years prior where they got Hughes – and they were able to get Heischer. So that's technically five number one draft picks in the span of what, four years? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, five first. Uh, first okay. Picks, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so uh, Alexander Holtz, a right winger, seventh overall. Um, really good game, man. We, we when we did the show, we we called the uh, the draft show. All of us were on that show, and we all thought that was a good fit for yeah. New Jersey um, to take that because that was something that they really needed um, for sure. A scorer. Yeah, yeah a scorer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, their second guy that they picked was another one too, um, Dawson Mercer. He was more of a center. But we all agreed, thought, hey, he'd be good for New Jersey. Uh, okay. Yeah. He yeah. can play both ways a little bit. And exactly. Has some he has a good two-way game. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. He's got some grind to his game, and they don't have too many guys in like that in New Jersey. Yeah, a very good pickup. Very good. Yeah, pickup. and we all and look when we called the draft, we all agreed that we thought that these guys would be, they would have a chance. Look, we're probably going to see these guys in camp for them this year. Okay, Holtz for sure. Yeah. Holtz Mercer for sure. Probably. Yeah. yeah, at least that. At the very least that. You know what I mean? So. We, we, look, stranger things have happened for for you know first round draft picks making the team. I mean, Simone Gagne did it for us back in two thousand. Yeah. You know, and other guys uh, when her when he sure he sure was selected as number first overall. He made the team that year. I mean, that yeah. was also the same year that Nolan Patrick was drafted. But mm-hmm. yeah, we right. really liked their draft. They had a really good draft. We really think that they did um, a because they're rebuilding, you know what I mean? And because they were they're trying to put it together, you know what I'm saying? 
And with some of the offseason moves that they did, um, along with the draft, uh, I think we all agree that um, Shiro is not going to really put a, a, a quality product on the ice this year, per se. But maybe in the next year or two, we're going to start seeing New Jersey is going to be knocking on the door. And I think we're going to start seeing them be like what happened with the Islanders where the Islanders started off with pretty much blank cupboards and then they built up, got a good coach, got a good GM, and then were able to build and then look where they are. You know what I mean? I think New Jersey is kind of following that yeah. same kind of pattern where they they had really nothing. I mean, there's $17 million under the cap. Now, that was yeah. gonna be my that was gonna be my next thing. I, <laughs> I was, was gonna, gonna talk say, about though, funny you just nice seg- we, nice segue yeah, over you like that? We, yeah. Before we go to that though, from the draft, I was gonna say, like I said before the video, they also drafted now I'm I believe what Pirlo's saying. I think um I almost Blackwood go dolls because I was gonna mention something about Nico Dolls, but but Kenzie Blackwood is gonna be a solid goalie, but they drafted a security blanket in case he's not because Dolls was one of the top three goalies in this draft, and they ended up getting him in the third. Then they got a guy I know about because some people wrote about him as a potential ladder round guy that the Flyers could have got was Yarmir Pitlick in the fourth, who's considered the all-around player that can kind of create plays, opportunities for others, but also pot the puck himself. I think he had, if I remember correctly, 50 points in his junior league season last year. So uh, he's a pretty good player, especially to grab in the uh, fourth round after you had that good of a first round and grabbed a potential goalie. So they had a pretty good draft through and through, uh, even in the later rounds as well. And and we're even going to – we're probably going to – we're going to butcher this name, Sakir Mukamadulin. Mukamadulin or Mahamadulin or something of that nature. Mahaka Madulin. Um, yeah. he's, but he was a defenseman. We were all like shaking our head. Yeah. Why did he pick him? What? We yeah. didn't think that was a good pick. I wasn't quite as surprised as many. I actually had Mahamadulin in the first round where most scouts had him lower. We'll see if I was correct or not. I just really I mean, liked, he was picked 20th overall. I really liked his game. I really thought he was going to be a lot better than a lot of people projected him to be. To tell you the honest truth, the guy that they lost out on because the Rangers drafted ahead of him, Schneider, yeah. I think Mahamudulin has a greater upside than okay. Schneider, but Schneider's going to play sooner, sooner. than okay. Mahamudulin. You see what okay. I mean? Yeah, yeah, So yeah. we'll see what happens there. <laughs> then again, this is how I, that works. I've seen this in a player like Muhammad Doolin before, and I can't remember his name, and he ended up being trash. So, uh, <laughs> At least not in NHL caliber, but you're kind of shooting darts at a board when you get down to the lower parts here a little bit. So, well, you know, uh, but still, but his, though. his name will be fun. I'm sure all the commentators out there in New Jersey was like, no! No, no, no. Yeah, don't pick that guy, please. No. I'm going to say that's that like, every single time he's got the puck. <laughs> that's like when uh, when uh, Pittsburgh Steelers drafted Chris Fumata Maafala. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so there you go. <laughs> yeah. And he was a he was a good fullback. He played for the team for a couple of years, but man, just trying to so they just they they shortened it and they just called him Foo. Yeah. Right. So okay, that works. So just call him. So we'll just call him Shakir. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. From from so from the rebuilding thing, we'll move on now to something that kind of looks le- maybe a little less like than a rebuild, but interesting moves nonetheless. Uh, they they. Gave a third round pick, I believe, for Janssen to Toronto, and I'll give this over to uh, I'll give this over to Projo. Uh, what do you think of the of, of Janssen in Toronto? What's your take on that little move that they made there? Um, so Janssen's one of those players that is obviously one of those harder working guys. He grinded it from a seventh round pick to make in the NHL. So whenever you go from being in the last round of the draft and making the league, you're playing on house money pretty much at that point. And whatever you accomplish is very good. <laughs> um, but he's <laughs> a guy, uh, two years ago, he got 43 points. Last year in 43 games, coincidentally, uh, after his 43-point season, he got 21. So he's a guy 
Um, he shouldn't be your top line left winger, obviously, but he's a guy that when he's in the right situation with the right guys is going to produce this year since he is likely, according to Cap Friendly, going to be on their top line. He's probably going to get at least to that 43 points. He might even get to where he got in his AHL years, even in the 50s, because you're playing with the Heath years, the Hughes of the world. They're great. They're cream of the crop young players. Uh, it, when they re-sign a guy like Brad, Gusev, Palmieri, you're playing with all those guys. So you're going to be, that's going to increase your point total, no matter if you move between the first or second yeah. line, because that's yeah. the money line. There. Yeah. So it's good. But I like the move. I think they need to get those guys that you know are just going to be good foundation guys that produce what they produce, but they're also just going to be great guys to have. And anybody that's a seventh round pick that makes the league automatically usually falls into the category of a great guy to have around because you know he's going to instill the work ethic in everybody because he made it from the bottom literally to the top is a good Canadian rapper in Drake uh, from your land up there, would we'll say. Started from the bottom, now it's so, yeah. uh, so uh, that's what uh, Yancey <laughs> did. So I think it's a decent uh, yeah. move for them, as well as I think picking up Dmitry Kulikov, the other move they made is a decent move because they needed to add to their defense. And the fact that he's healthy now makes him effective, at least as a 5-6, because he actually plays well enough. And you don't know, he could be a surprise guy because the fact that he's been healthier Maybe he'll eventually get his legs back and he'll play more like a four. You never know. He's probably not likely, but he's at least a five six, and you never know because he has the skill. It just left because of injuries, and that's just unfortunate. So it's nice to see him at least right. bounce back to the bottom yeah. pairing defense. Yeah, um, Steel. Yeah, you uh, you like these guys that work their way up and and you know oh, yeah. beat, beat beat the odds and all oh, that yeah. sort of thing, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. I also like the other move that they did, too. They kind of brought in Corey Crawford, too. I mean, they didn't trade or anything for him. They just kind of brought him in as a free agent. You know, I mean, you you really um, were really high on Blackwood and felt that he would be the number one. And, and bringing in Corey Crawford would be a good backup for him. You know what I mean? Uh, but they do need to re-sign Blackwood, okay, because McKenzie hasn't been signed yet. And and the fact that they are so much under the cap, I mean, $17 million, what are they waiting for? Uh, now, now yeah. what I do understand is this. Their core for next year, most of them, their main core are going to be need to be resigned. Okay? So you're looking at yeah. Travis Sajak, Kyle Palmieri, uh, Nikita Gusev. You know, even Ryan Murray, all these guys are going to need to be re-signed next year. Okay, so I understand that they're building, you know what I mean? But I did like that move that they brought in Corey Crawford for Blackwood because based off of everything that you were saying, Blackwood had a really good year despite of the fact that New Jersey has no defense and really it's just he sure and, and them guys is kind of out there just struggling, you know what I mean? So. Yeah. But I do yeah. like those moves. I do like Janssen coming over. Our, uh, that, that, that to me, I think, is a good move for New Jersey. And he's going to, I believe, he's going to be a difference maker, too. So we forgot about Ryan Murray. You brought him up. He's another uh, guy. I was just going to pass yeah. Ryan Murray out. So there you guys. Actually, yeah. I, was pass, I had to bring him up. I mean, come I was going to pass Crawford. And then you, I don't even, you guys just, I'll just sit over here. And put that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, go ahead. Just but, go talk about Murray. Yeah. Right. <laughs> just take Ryan, Ryan Murray. Just, He's a I'll pretty good. He developed to a good um, at least stay at home, do what he has to do, guy, when he was supposed to be more than that, but at least he became that good four. You know he's going to be a good four. He probably could be a three in the right system, but he's definitely going to be that good fourth defenseman. Oh, yeah, usually. Uh, so uh, that's what you got, and then you got a guy that you know is a good five, six, and cool cards. So they added two good pieces to their defense for sure, and I've always liked Will Butcher that they have. Uh, also, I mean, He's a guy that has some offensive skill as a defenseman. So when your name's Butcher, if you can develop more, that plays fun too. You can cut up the defense, you know. Uh, 
I, so, I guess um, if you have your name Butcher, and, I guess you're okay. He's doing okay. Gotta and, learn, he's got to learn how to play defense, though. He's oh, very, very poor. Hundred percent. He's very offensive right now. Severson's very fun to watch. Probably the most fun to watch on the team. So underrated, you have you add underrated, those two. Yeah. yeah, you have those two added into that core. Having more defensive guys like Kulikov and Murray kind of allows Subban to also play more in a role that P.K. Subban should probably play in compared to what he was doing last season. So yeah. that also plays better. And also Lindy Ruff plays to P.K. Subban because the coaching staff, uh, Lindy Ruff wants his defenseman to get smartly involved. So you might see the best out of Butcher and Subban. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I like Lindy Ruff at the helm. Good points. Yeah. I was just going to say, because we didn't even talk about Subban. Um, look, he's getting up there in age. Um, he's he's going to – I think he's – this is his last year of his contract? Yeah, I think he's got one more after this. One more I after this? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, look, he's lost I, – I, I don't care what you say. He's not the P, P.K. Subban that was playing um, in Nashville – or <laughs> he's not the same guy. All he's right? been slipping for a while. Big time. Okay. And so he's more of the name now instead of the player. You know, unfortunately, that's just what happens. You know what I mean? Age does creep up on you, and that's just the way it is. You know what I mean? So I'm not impressed with with what they're doing as far as that's concerned with keeping PK, PK around. <sighs> Maybe he's good for the locker room. I don't know. You well, know? I think you have to, unless if you're going to pay for the buyout. And what's the point when you have two years in a rebuilding situation? You right, and they work. already have two other guys on the books that they still are paying for. Yeah, PK, it, it, PK good for the locker room have not really gone in a sentence too often in his yeah, life. Yeah, I, I don't that's know. What I mean. I don't know that's, <laughs> that's what I mean. I just think it's, I just think it's more – you got a guy that's a veteran and you're going to keep him because you're in a rebuild. You're not going to be able to get rid of 9 million in the climate the league's in right Ooh. now. No. So and he is also a name. Uh, yeah, I also think with a better coaching system, we saw him two years ago still producing the 50 point from, yeah. um, I almost said, Nashville, for Nashville. And then the final year he produced in the low 30s. If he can even get into the mid to 30s to 40 that wouldn't be too bad for a jersey team and you might be able to see that with lindy ruff because he has a defense he put his system plays more to offensive defensemen yeah. than they had in the past so I, i'm glad i'm glad you're saying that because i've taken a ribbon ever since uh the, and it was you said shiro and i if i i do remember now i think fitzpatrick took over for shiro now but Fitzgerald. Um, yeah, Tom Fitzgerald, Fitzgerald, yeah. Tom Fitzgerald. Yeah, Shiro got let go, and Fitzgerald took over. And okay. he's the one. He's the one that signed Lindy Ruff. Now I forgot about that, but yeah, he's the one that signed Lindy Ruff. And I remember when they did it, everybody was upset. In fact, we have a guy that we follow. What's uh, I'm going to give him a little bit of a shout out there. The uh, the face off on Facebook there. You know that that one group called the Face Off or something like that that we uh, uh, we have. Right. Wait, hold on. Is it the face-off circle? The face-off circle or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the face-off circle. I'm going to give him a shout-out because I yeah. think he does a great job. I just totally uh, I totally disagreed with him here. I think Lindy Ruff is a great coach that got put in a bad situation in Dallas, yeah. and I am so rooting for him here, and I totally agree with Joe here because he's the professor, that <laughs> – that he's going to make Subban a better player. If that's my my surprise of the year, and I'm probably going to do a video on my biggest surprises of the year, is that PK Subban has a great year this year with Lindy Ruff as a coach. So he's a motivator. We all know that. Yes. Okay. And I, I look. They also hired uh, Chris Taylor and Dave uh, Rogalski, and I had I believe they have um, history with Lindy Ruff in the past. You know what Could I mean? Be. Yeah. Could be. And especially with what you're talking about, bringing us, um, assimilating Lindy Ruff's defensive system. You know what I mean? So I, I really, I really think that you might be onto something there with that PK Subban with Lindy Ruff and with the system that he's going to try and put in here with New Jersey and some of the guys that he's brought in, um, to try to be on the defense with them. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, yeah. I think, I, look, I really do think that New Jersey is going to be a much improved team this coming year, but I don't think they're going to be improved enough to be, to get over the hump. No. Yeah. Well, their biggest issue is going to be like I kind of hinted at at the beginning when talking about Johnson being able to perform up on the top two lines below those top two lines because the top two you have Janssen, he's your Palmieri projected with Gusev, Hughes, and uh, Bratt when he resigned yeah. as the projected second. Then you have Miles Wood as a third, good third line player. Michael McLeod is not proven yet. You don't know what you're going to get as Michael McLeod. That's uh, the other guy that's put on the third line. Travis Zajac is Travis Zajac at the point of 35 years old. He might be healthy the whole season. He might not, and he's really just a face-off guy that can play some defense at this point. Um, but so that really should probably be your fourth line center, not a third line type guy. But because Zacha hasn't been able to develop to the point they want him to, to be a third line guy. They have mm -hmm. him projected as the fourth line yeah. center with uh, Brett Sene, another guy who's not proven yet. You have to see if you can get something out of him and Nick Merkley, who I think will be a pretty good player that will probably end up taking Michael McLeod spot on the third line at some point uh, on the projected as the fourth line. So uh, those are the guys uh, out of that group. I said, Merkley's my favorite guy out of the young guys. Uh, Zacha, you need to, you would hope it's a surprise year as Devils fans and he can become that third line guy because um, Travis Zajac has had a heck of a career and hats off to him, but he's not really a top three line player anymore. Yeah, Pavel Zaka is another first uh, round pick too, by the way. He was yep. picked seventh in 2015, actually was a kind of hasn't panned out very well, but yeah. he's, still got to, he's still got a lot of growth to do. And he's the only... He when what he does mention with those lines is was it Hughes, Gusev, and Brat? That's a very small line. He sure's he sure's not gonna intimidate anybody either. And, and, yeah, because he's not that big either. No, Palmieri, like they need size in that lineup big time, and that's really what they're gonna need to focus on moving forward. So this is about what they did in the offseason and what they're doing moving forward. I think we pretty much had it figured out right from the beginning what they're doing moving forward, and that is this team still has – there's a lot of growth that has to happen with this team for yeah. it to go. But I would give them a fairly good grade for adding some pieces to ensure the growth to here. Ooh, I yeah, like, that's a good point. Like you said, the Crawford play to help Blackwood – become i mean could you pick a better guy he's won two cups yeah. for chicago i mean he's played with some of the greatest leaders yeah. in our game and take him a backup you got there exactly i mean he played Very awesome good guy he played against awesome stuff. against edmonton at 35 years old i mean that was a to me that was a really fantastic pickup yeah. picking up johnson a, a guy like you guys were mentioned had mentioned that had nothing was given to him he got it. He was a seventh round pick. He had to fight for every inch right. of NHL time he got. Could you get a better mentor for these kids that they've got some higher round first round picks like Zaka? We just talked about that hasn't panned out. Maybe he could look at a guy that had to take every inch and nothing was given to him and re realize what you got to do to be in the NHL, right? Exactly. So, yeah. I thought Fitzpatrick did some really good work on picking guys that are older but are going to be able to bring um, some some uh, a cocktail of character to this team. You know what I'm saying? A little bit of accountability, I think, yeah. too. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's why I also think um, you were saying about size. They picked up, like I said about this draft, they kind of picked up good in ladder rounds. The same was in 2018 because – uh, Jaeger Sarankovic, I mentioned before, is playing in the K. The f he was the fifth round from Belarus. He now has 15 points um, in uh, let me get in 27 games in the KHL, which is really good for a fifth round pick from two years ago uh, in a draft playing in the second best league. So that's why I think he has a chance eventually to make an impact this year because the biggest question guy I think going in when you look at their depth chart into the lineup this year is either Michael McLeod because he hasn't been able to get going and he's in the final year of his ELC and they're just probably going to give him a shot since he's in the final year of his ELC 
Or uh, Brett Sine, uh, who's a former six-round pick from years ago. Um, those are the two biggest question marks in the lineup. One, because he's a six-round pick. The other, because uh, he hasn't been able to fully do anything yet. Um, so that's uh, that's why I'm, I'm going to be interested to see if one of those guys becomes a good surprise guy or they have to pick from their minors early in the season because those guys cannot stay in the lineup. Yeah, or maybe, or maybe pick up waivers, and they still got lots of they still got lots of cap room. Uh, there are free agents out there because that, that McLeod was another first round. Yeah, McLeod. they got lots. They got lots of good. They got lots of good options. Yes, McLeod is was a first rounder. Yeah, that's right, a late first round. First round pick, yeah. yeah, so they got lots of first rounders in there. Anyways, this is always going and going. We could talk for hours because that's what we do here. That's right. <laughs> Love talking hockey. I love having you guys on. Uh, this has been fantastic. Thank you for uh, bringing your pearls and telling us all this new information in our minds so we know what the New Jersey Devils are going to be. Everybody was wondering, and now everybody knows. So everybody can bed, go to bed early, rest easy tonight, that they know exactly what's going to happen with the New Jersey Devils. <laughs> Steel Flyers. Steel Flyers. What are we doing with this Steel Flyer? What is this crazy website all about, my friend? Crazy. Oh, yeah. Well, first of all, we're going to say uh, www.steelflyers.com. Come there to catch all your sports needs. You can get hockey, football, everything you want. You can come there and get it. Um, you two fine gentlemen. Um, you can get all your information right there on Steel Flyers for sure. Uh, and, man, we got all kinds of stuff coming up. Um, hockey writers inc off the wall hockey um joe boric show uh nhl pearl of wisdom man we got all kinds of stuff going on man <laughs> great writer bill Meltzer coming on possibly i hear oh yeah man there you go we're getting big writers we're getting everything why because it's going to be absolutely amazing yeah. anybody we tell this to and tell them exactly it. what it's going to be about they is going it. to be fantastic wait yeah. till the live streams and all the sports and all it's going to be lots great. of stuff coming lots of stuff coming stay tuned man stay tuned for sure stay tuned you can also check me out on twitter at steel flyers 52 and you can just check me out on the web at www.steelflyers.com Joe Bork, my friend, thank you. Tell Joe, thanks for coming on. Tell 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 them what Pro Joe is doing now. Uh, you can again get my information on SteelFlyers.com, uh, Sports Fanatic News. Uh, please subscribe to the YouTube channel if you would like. Uh, trying to get it to hundred by the end of the year. We're at seventy nine uh, subscribers right now. Um, and then this has been. I always love talking about every team. Just been awesome. Uh, you can follow me at JJ Bork. 26 B O R E K on Twitter and have a great and safe, pleasant Thanksgiving to everybody that celebrates in the States. Everyone. So. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I'm Pearl of wisdom. Everybody knows that and uh, hit the subscribe and the bell. Thanks. I'd like to get, I'd like to get up to a thousand. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. So if you could do that, that would be great. That's our full 42% boys and girls. Have a great day. And lots of love to ya.